Hi guys and welcome back to the real Huggable Panzer, or if you're new to the channel then, welcome! Today we are in Dreams PlayStation 4 and I'm going to be showing you how to make a tank like this into a remote control tank that can drive around and blow things up. So uh, let's just jump straight into the video. Uh, basically I've made a basic tank, now all this is is a rectangle with just some angles cut out to make it look like a tank. but the top half is separated from the bottom half and that is because we need to bolt it together to make that turret rotatable so I'm going to show you how to do that now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the grid on just because we need the boat so once that is on like that we need to go into the gadgets and we need to go over to the red section connectors once you click that we get the bolt now I always forget which way to do it but I think you go like this the main part is this uh, pink thing here this needs to be into the middle the reason why we've got the grid on is when you grab the pink thing this is the rotator so you press triangle on it to make it snap to the grid and then make sure that this is in the center to give you a nice even rotating rotation sorry uh, so as you can see now that our turret is now rotating very very nicely so that is actually perfect for what we need so now that's done that's basically all the articulation that this tank needs just for the sake of this tutorial that is uh, so now I'm going to get a microchip and I'm going to open the microchip the first thing we need to do is we need to get a a controller sensor so once we've got the controller sensor we put that down this is sort of like the controls of the tank so if you make a vehicle or anything that you need to control this is what you need and your input into the controller are the inputs in here so when you press X you can see it lights up so any input you put will go into the controls and now what we need to do is we need to fit the tank with driving uh, logic so what we're going to do is we're going to get a mover and we're going to stick that down we're also going to make the arrow point forwards first of all we need to make it local and then the arrow pointing forwards we've got the front of the tank so as you can see the tank is now driving forwards now it's a little bit too fast for what I need tanks go quite slow don't they so there we go there is uh, the forward motion for that and we're going to stick that with R2 now as you notice when you put the input into this you have the power and you have this forward speed if you plug it into the power it will activate the tank but you'll have no control over how fast the tank will go if you want to vary the speed when you press a soft R2 click it into there so if we just quickly possess the tank I'll show you what I mean so now I can move forwards very slowly and the more I push down the R2 button the faster I get that is perfect for what we need so that's that done very very easy I will now put that over there and it's always important to tidy up your wires so we'll just put it like that now what we'll also do is we'll use a rotator now what the rotator will do is give you the ability to move the uh, tank left or right so like we did before local space and now you can see that there's this ring we want the ring to be vertical so like this the tank will do a loop this way we don't want that what we want it to do is rotate vertically like this horizontally I mean so as you can see now the body of the tank will turn like that so what we are gonna do is because we want it to go two ways we're going to copy it and one is going to be a minus 180 
So now we've got the positive and we've got to We'll move this up there a little bit so we can concentrate on this logic. I'll just move them down there. Okay. So now what we need is a splitter. So we need one splitter and we need two splitters. This output goes into the other splitter. So now you can see that when you plug in the so how are we going to drive this? You've got R2. We are going to need the left stick. So we go to left stick local. We'll plug it into the splitter that we've just put down. Alright. So now you can see that there's two outputs, up and down, left and right. We want the left and right outputs. So this splitter is detecting whether we are pushing right or left on the left analog stick. And then we go from left and right. And now we've got a positive and a negative. So again, like we did with the uh the forward motion, we're gonna stick it into the speed variable. So now when we possess our tank you can see now that we're driving our tank around and that was very simple one mistake that I've made which is what I always do and for some reason the left and right is inverted to how it is supposed to be so all we'll do is we'll just swap these around so the positive will go into the negative and the negative will go into the positive perfect so now as you can see for driving our tank around there that's much better look at that perfect awesome so now we want to make the turret so I'm going to put all of this logic into a new microchip that microchip is going to be called the base movement so if I just change the name of the microchip so now we've got all of this is going into the base movement because this is everything we need to make the tank drive and then that means that our logic will be nice and clean so now we don't need to mess about with all of this logic perfect okay now we're going to need to open up a new microchip that will be called uh, turret and we're going to have different kinds of logic in there we're going to have logic for the gun and logic for the uh, the rotating so I'll get a new one and I'll just put that down and we'll call that gun turret so now this is going to be focusing on the top turret of this gun here alright so now what we need to do is we need to make this rotate so exactly the same as what we did before we're going to stick the rotator on the top of the uh, the gun here we're going to need a microchip because it's going to be more than one piece of logic so we're going to do the exact same as what we did before but now we're going to do it with the turret so now we need to go into this and we need to get a rotator and a rotator again and we'll just make this one minus 180 so negative 180 excellent now we're going to get the splitters again which will be here and we need two of those so we'll copy and paste right now we need to figure out what button we are going to have to rotate the turret I've got R2 to drive forwards, left and right. We'll use the right analog stick to control the gun turret. So we go here, we go to the right analog stick and we'll shove that in there. Now that should be left and right again, yep. And now we've got a negative and a positive. So before we made the positive going to the positive so now I'm going to try and put the negative into the positive and the positive into the negative very confusing but you know just got to try it out so let's just go into play mode and see how this goes ah see I uh, I messed it up forgot to change the rotators 
so make sure that you always change the rotators the way you want it to go so we've got that local space make sure that you put local space on each time because uh, if you don't when you drive around in certain areas of the map it will change which is what happened before when I made a Dalek so we'll test it now the camera doesn't change that is slightly annoying so now ah the turret is aha so I made the turret not movable because when it's movable and the tank drives forward the 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 gun goes round but now we can turn that off so what I'm gonna do this is a little bit a uh, little bit complicated now but we're gonna add a little bit more logic it's not too complicated it's very easy but it's just something that you need to do sometimes so now I'm going to get a keyframe now every time you move that or that I want this tanks turret to be movable so these inputs will go into there the reason why I'm doing that is because uh, because when the tank drives forward the gun turret is not moving because it's not movable but when it is movable it moves when the tank drives forward so now with this keyframe when I press those buttons the turret will be movable and it will be able to move aha see there you go now the turret moves and when I drive forward and turn the tank it doesn't move so I hope that wasn't too confusing I'm not very good at tutorials and explaining things but I think that does make sense so now you've got the perfect movement this is moving and behaving like you would expect a tank to but we haven't done the gun logic yet so now for the gun logic I'm gonna make a, another microchip we're gonna close this one down we're gonna open a new microchip so the gun is just basically going to be uh, emitting a projectile so what we are going to do is we need to make the projectile first so make sure you're not scoped into the tank uh, this is a separate scope and what we're going to do is we're just going to make the most basic shape of a tank shell that you can like literally so basic no one's going to really see it anyway because it's going to shoot out the end of the tank so uh let's try and get this into a nice shape there that's exactly what you want that kind of uh, bullet projectile shape so that's perfect so now on to this we are now going to put some logic we are going to get another microchip and we are going to enlarge this so now we need to get a impact sensor so when it hits something we're going to move the sensitivity all the way up the slightest thing that this bullet hits we want it to activate so we're going to put it as high as we can I think yes 100% is the highest so now every time this hits something it will send the logic off now we're also going to get a timeline because we want a destroyer to activate but we also want a explosion effect so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look on the Dreamiverse for 
an explosion. Now, whoa, that was loud. So a lot of these explosions are good. Uh, I'm just going to get the basic medium molecule one. Uh, because a lot of these explosions actually have logic attached to them. Uh, and we just want it to activate. We don't want any extra logic. I'm trying to find the medium molecule one. Hold on a second. Ah, here we go. Explosion. So, we are going to put the explosion there. We are going to get the emitter now and put that on the timeline. So that's going to go there. Right, we turn that down. We want the explosion to stay where it erupted in the first place. So when the bullet hits, we want the explosion to stay there. We want... Um, we want it to just emit once. We don't want a machine gun. We just want it to hit once and then explode. So that's perfect. And now we will just get this explosion. Now we're going to stick this explosion where the bullet is. So as soon as it hits, the explosion will go off. And that looks pretty good to me. We want it quite big. So when the explosion happens, it'll be quite big. Boom. There we go. Perfect. Um, and now we've got that, we also need a destroyer. So when it hits, it will almost instantly destroy. Uh, we want that to be instantaneous, otherwise it won't emit. So there we go. So when that hits, it should destroy itself. So now we're going to put this into there, make sure that this is on play once and now that should be good to go we'll give that a little test, we'll move it up and we'll pull it unmovable look at that, that's perfect so that's that, now we need to uh, put an emitter on this turret so I'm going to open up the head logic here I'm going to stick on this wow an emitter and this is going to emit this projectile and we're going to put it down we're going to make make it smaller move it out of the way a little bit we are going to make this smaller Just so it fits into the uh, the tank there. Uh, just lower it down just a little tiny bit. There, that looks pretty much perfect to me. Now, hopefully, that's straight. No, it isn't. So um, yes, maybe we can make it straighter. See, sometimes on dreams, the grid messes up. We need that to be absolutely straight, otherwise you're going to have a wonky gun barrel. That's pretty good. So now, we'll give that a little test. You can see that it's exploding. That's pretty good. We want it to shoot further than that. So I think that will be good like that. So that looks pretty good so far. I want the tank to only shoot one bullet every three seconds. So a bit like a delay. Uh, maybe I can make this three seconds. Let's see how that works. Ah, I forgot to put the button on, sorry. So, let's try. So, we will shoot. 
there we go perfect so now we've got the turret moving it only shoots once every three seconds we're going forwards and we're going left and right too so that is pretty epic so that is how you make a drivable tank we've got the forward motion we've got the turning motion and we've also got a working turret that does actually shoot every three seconds so I hope this tutorial was helpful to you I will make another tutorial of how to make your projectiles actually destroy targets and I'll also be showing you how to add the sound effects to the tank as well I didn't cover it in this one video because I don't want to make it too long so I will see you in the next part of the tutorial Thanks for watching and if you like the content leave a subscribe and a like on the video and comment down below if there's anything that you want me to teach you how to make in dreams. So once again thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.